The concept of the services sector has been looked at and spoken about in economics for the last 50, 100 years uh, with some kind of disbelief that in fact you know, there is anything actually called a services sector, such a ne nebulous set of ideas. But when you actually go behind the concept of a, of a services sector, what drives a services sector? There are some interesting answers. Firstly, household wealth. One of the, one of the interesting issues in the world is that uh, as households become more wealthy, they can only drive one or two cars, but they can have 50 massages, they can have plastic surgery, they can have more education, they can have more trips. They, so services, as wealth grows, Household expenditure on services has continued to increase dramatically and expenditure on durable goods has actually flattened out, as, as one would actually expect. So the services, services are actually driven by the ha household wealth. Secondly, um, the history of innovation in the world has actually been around the services sector. And so a good example would be electrification was the biggest problem, the biggest um, uh, technological boom in the world and perhaps the, the boom that's had more impact than any other boom in, in world history until the digital revolution. And with the digital revolution we, are, we, we have no idea where we can get to and that's we're in a situation now where everything from replicating people's vision and replicating hearing uh, into artificial intelligence is on the table. And, and if we looked at the genome uh, and, and if we had to look at nanotechnology we all realise that, that we're in a situation where this is the beginning of a very, very interesting and long journey. That's what the services revolution is. And what we're, what we're not understanding, because we don't know, we're not understanding what the spatial and city planning implications of this might actually look like. And we haven't seen them yet. And the book is asking us to begin to anticipate what these things might look like, but also to help to turbocharge what those outcomes might look like. So as we shift into, the, into, into technology, that then also turbocharges globalisation because globalisation is also driven by wealth. So as China, for example, becomes more wealthy, um, the current forecast in, in, in the book is that there will be 875 million, so I'll say that 875 million more people in their middle class who could afford a trip to come to Australia by 2030. 875 million. Now, that's the beginning of a tourism boom. But of course, if we had a look at the tourism boom, how do we see that play out? Well, we see TripAdvisor, we see Webjet, we see all kinds of new booking systems, all kinds of new ways to understand tourism. We see Facebook pages, we see people taking photographs and Instagrams. So what we're beginning to see here is technology and globalisation coming together to create a huge uh, in increase in the demand for all kinds of services, many of which we haven't begin, begun to understand uh, the shape of.